Hello, my name is Robert Fox. I am the director of B2B EAI software development for Liaison Technologies. And today we're going to look at how to use the SAP integration bridge in conjunction with Liaison Delta and Liaison ECS. The first thing I would like to do is discuss how we can take an incoming EDI purchase order, or an 850 in this case, and translate it into an SAP IDOC and by leveraging the SAP integration bridge, we can automatically integrate that IDOC into SAP. What we're looking at now is Delta 5.0. And what I would like to do is show you first how we create an EDI model to represent our source data, which is going to be a purchase order version 4010 of the ANSI X12 standard. First thing I'm going to do is click on this EDI business object model creation Merlin and we have several options here. For this demonstration what I'd like to do is show you how you can take sample EDI documents and generate what we call a business object model. Here I have a sample 850 from my trading partner. If I'd like to see what that looks like in another liaison product called EDI Notepad, I can go ahead and do that. What you're looking at here is a HTML rendering of the incoming purchase order. If you'd like to see what the actual data looks like, we can switch to our edit view and you can see the actual EDI. This will be the basis for our integration demo today. And that's it. We now have a, a source object model that we can use uh, to represent the purchase order that we are going to be getting from our trading partner. The next part of the demonstration is we need to now produce a model that represents the target IDOC that we would like to integrate into SAP. Now part of the issue with IDOC models is they're very complex and contain many records. I'm going to open up a sample to show you what an IDOC model looks like. And I can look at any of these records uh, by clicking on this tabular button here and you can see the definition for this particular record. Instead of creating this model within the Delta tool directly, we're going to generate this very same model by using the SAP integration bridge. This saves us time and creates a perfectly accurate model ready to use uh, in minutes or seconds. As part of the SAP integration bridge, I'm going to go ahead and run the IDOC modeler. On the screen you'll see we have two options. We, if we have credentials to connect to an SAP R3 server, we can select that option. If we do not, uh, then we can manually model based on a parser definition file from an SAP instance. Let's go ahead and pick the automatic option. Now you can see I have several SAP servers already defined. Let's go ahead and take a look at this screen. To configure a connection to an SAP server, you fill out this template here. Once filled, we can test the connection. And this will actually make a connection to the SAP server. For this demo, the SAP server that I'm connecting to is geographically located about 1,500 miles away. When I create this instance, I'm presented with this option that I can add this SAP server configuration to ECS. I'm going ahead and select yes because I'm going to use this same connection later in our integration demo when we start to integrate data from ECS. The next step is we're going to dynamically retrieve all of the definitions of all IDOC types from this server by hitting this Get Definitions button. This will take a few seconds. The purpose of this is we can actually get the live definitions for a particular IDOC from the SAP instance that we're connecting to. The benefit of this is that SAP is a highly customizable environment and allows for people to customize their IDOCs. And by modeling it this way, we can get a very accurate model in near real time. 
I'm interested in the orders of three, which is the purchase order representation uh, that I would like to generate and integrate into SAP. The next step is to give it a file name. For the sake of this demo, I will just call it orders 03. You can see I have the option of creating an XML-based IDOC model for use if you want to integrate directly into SAP PI. We can also set this up for multiplexing if you're going to write multiple maps using the same source IDOC. Uh, and lastly, if we want to go ahead and launch Delta on the creation of this map. I will not check that option, but I'm going to go ahead and hit finish now. And what's going to happen is we're going to connect to SAP Live. We're going to pull down the definition for this IDOC and generate an IDOC model. Our IDOC model is now complete. If we go back into Delta, we can open the file we just produced, which I saved to C orders 03, and you can see we just generated this particular IDOC model. As part of the SAP integration bridge, we pre-modeled and pre-mapped data samples for you so you can get going very quickly. For the sake of this demonstration, uh, I've already installed a map that will map the incoming EDI 850 to the IDOC orders that we would like modeled. You can also see we have some IDOC examples involving Edifact and also the XML version of IDOCs. If I open up this particular map, what you will see is the source model in this case is our EDI 850 purchase order and our target is the orders 03 IDOC. If we just look at the rules, you can see here we're actually doing simple drag and drop rule based mapping. And this tutorial assumes prior knowledge of the Delta mapping interface. We can go ahead and test this map by saying map test. We select our same source that we use to create our sample source model. And we have output here. If I double click and open that, you'll see we have an IDOC. The next step is we need to create in ECS through the management console an SAP output channel. We're going to use this so that when the map we wrote runs, it will automatically integrate the produced IDOC into SAP. So we simply create new SAP output channel and you'll notice that our server is already selected because it's the only one that we have. I press OK and that's it. We have an SAP output channel. We're going to come back into Delta and we're going to look at the map's properties. One of the things we need to do is we need to tell the map how to deliver data when it's produced. I need to set some trading partner information. In this case, we are the sender. I'm working with my trading partner, Dutch Foods. And I'm going to pick from my list the SAP output channel that we just produced. Hit OK. We're going to go ahead. Now when I run it, you'll notice the delivery goes to the SAP output channel. We are now going to install this map and we are going to ignore, ignore these errors. In this case, they're just unmapped uh, targets for the sake of this demonstration. That's fine. Yes, we would like to go ahead and install. We now have our map installed into the ECS environment. Now that we have our map installed, we need to create the business process within ECS. Our first step is we're going to create a file input channel. This file input channel is going to be used to trigger the map based on the incoming purchase order.
we select the folder and we pick the source file. I'm going to turn off a few default options so that we can run this demo again if necessary. The next thing we need to do is create an event role. We want to create a translation event role. And we are going to go ahead and pick our map that we just installed. This is the SAP integration map we just installed. And we're going to run it through the Delta output channel. And now we just need to associate this event rule with this file input channel. And the other thing we'll do is we will go ahead and use what we call uh, the scheduling or the file processor. For the sake of this demo, I want to turn this off because I want to kick off the demo uh, when I'm ready. So I have a file input channel. The event rule that it will fire is this translation event that will run the map that we wrote and test it against the uh, SAP IDOC. So I'm going to go ahead and say run now. Okay, so here we are in Data Administrator and you can see that this process here, this batch 42811, this is our input being scanned in by ECS. It's delivering to Delta, and in this case, it ran this particular translation map. That produced a new batch of data, which was a delivered SAP, and we know that it was successful because we can see here it was delivered to the SAP bridge, and there was an IDOC number returned. Uh, if there had been any errors, we would have seen that here as well. Um, the fact that we got an IDOC number assigned by SAP is a good sign. And what we can do now is I'm going to go ahead and log into SAP and show you uh, the integrated IDOC. Let's go ahead and log into SAP. And let's go ahead and run the IDOC filter. And we're just going to go ahead and accept the uh, current date and time range. This is all IDOCs created today. And you'll see here we've got the IDOC that corresponds with the one that we integrated uh, via ECS and Delta. And this concludes our integration demo of integrating data from Delta ECS into SAP.